This is the fifth and final section of chapter five on straight line graphs. And this section is modeling with straight lines. So first of all, when a straight line graph goes to the origin, so that means that the equation of the line is gonna be of the form y equals mx, then we can use the graph to model direct proportion problems. So here's a straight line graph that goes through the origin. And the equation of this line would be of the form y equals mx but since we're talking about proportion rather than use y equals mx i'm going to use y equals kx now k we know would be the gradient and we can see how we would find the gradient how we'd find the value of k but in the context of a question we want to know well what does k do how does it operate well the definition really of a gradient is that, or another definition of gradient is for every one unit of change in the x direction, I'm going to get a k unit of change or a k value of change in the y direction. So for example, if the equation of the line was y equals 2.5x, then every time x increases by one, k would uh, increase or the y value would increase by 2.5. So that way it helps us to be able to interpret what the gradient does in the context of a question. Example 15, the graph shows the extension E of a spring when different masses M are attached to the end of the spring. In part A, what we want to do is to calculate the gradient K of the line. So we need two points on the line to calculate the gradient. We want these points to be um, as far, a point, uh, uh, far apart on the line as possible. So I'm going to pick 0, 0. And I want to pick another point that I know goes through whole numbers. Now 105 looks like it does it. 210. And up here 420. So I'm going to pick that point there. So I could pick any one of these points. They all look like they're going to be whole number values. But I'm going to pick... 420 so the gradient which is k is going to be the change in y which is just 20 which is 20 minus 0 over 400 minus 0 which is just 400 and that simplifies to 1 over 20 so we can say that k is 1 over 20. let's go into part b write an equation linking e and m so let's start with y equals mx or we could even start with y equals mx plus c. Now it goes through the origin, so c is going to be zero. Because we're dealing with a proportion problem, um, and we've worked out the value of the mass as k, we're going to use k. Now that makes sense because we're already going to be using m for mass. So we'll just write y equals kx. Now the rest is just substitution. We substitute the x and y with the letters that are on the axis, and we substitute k for 1 over 20. So y, on the y-axis, we've got the letter e, so we'll use e there, equals k, which is 1 over 20. And on the x-axis, we have the letter m, so we'll put an m there. So e equals 1 20th m. Now part c, explain what the value of k represents in this situation. Now remember, the value of k, the gradient, represents what happens to this value for every one change in this value. So if you've increased the mass by one gram, the extension will go up by one twentieth of a centimetre. So we can write something like this. k represents the amount of extension e of the spring where uh, per gram of increase we could say or, or for every one gram of increase or per gram uh, let's write uh, k represents the extension e of the spring when the mass is increased by one gram or you could, as I said, per gram, something like that. 
Example 16, a container is filled with water, a hole was made at the bottom of the container. The depth of water remaining was recorded at certain time intervals. The table here shows the results. Part A, determine whether a linear, linear model is appropriate by drawing a graph. So first of all, we're gonna draw some axes. Now, we always draw on the top row. This is gonna go on the X axis and the bottom row always goes on the Y axis. And then we fill in some appropriate values on the axis here. And now we're going to plot these points. So here's my points plotted. The graph isn't finished until we join the points up. So let's do that. Or at least try and draw a line the best fit. And uh, can you see they're pretty much in a straight line? So is a linear model appropriate? Yes, it is. So a linear model is appropriate since the points lie on a straight line. Okay, let's go on to part B. And it says, uh, de deduce an equation of the form D equals A plus B. Okay, so on this, A is going to represent the gradient of this line and B is going to represent the intercept here. So let's start by working out A, which is going to be the gradient of this line now we're expecting it to be negative now we don't need to read off values from here we can use the table and use the two values furthest away from each other to find the gradient just as we would read off the two furthest points we can to get the gradient if we were just reading off values so that gradient so we'll have this will be like my y2 minus y1 x2 minus x1 so it's going to be 3.5 minus 19.8 that's going to give us the negative over 120 minus zero and that gives us exactly negative 13 over 100 we can leave it in that form b is going to be the intercept where the line crosses the d axis and we can read that off here the intercept there is 19.1. So just write 19.1. So we can write the equation of the line as D equals negative 13 over 100 T plus 19.1. Okay, so we're now ready to move on to part C. Interpret the meaning of the coefficients a and b now interpret does not mean um, a is the gradient b is the intercept interpret means look at what the question is about and make sure that we're talking about time and we're talking about depth of water so let's start with a so remember a represents as this changes by one the amount that this changes so you could say for every second the depth of water goes down or decreases by 13 over 100 centimeters. Okay, so we've got that written there. For each second, the depth of water in a container decreases by basically 0.13 centimeters. And then we want to interpret B. So B is the intercept, it's this value here. It's the value of the depth of water when t is zero in other words the initial depth of water in the container before the hole was made so i've just put the initial depth of water in the container okay let's move on to part d and we're probably going to have to do part d up here and it says use the model to find a time when the container will be empty now the container will be empty when the depth of water is zero so empty in the context of this question means that d the depth is zero so we're just going to put zero into this equation here and work out t so we'll have that zero equals negative 13 over 100 t plus 19.1 so it's just about now rearranging this to find out what t is so 13 over 100 t if we move that to the other side equals 19.1 so that will give us T equaling 19.1 divided by 13 over 100. Let's call it 0.13 now. So what value of T do we get? 
Right, so after pressing the SD button, I get 146.923. I think one decimal place will be enough. And we're going to put the units because this is seconds. OK, so you don't need to write down everything on your calculator display. Uh, one decimal place for time in seconds is normally enough. Example 17. In 1991, there were 18,500 people living in Bradley Stoke. Planners projected that the number of people living in Bradley Stoke would increase by 350 each year. Part A. Write a linear model for the population P of Bradley Stoke T years after 1991. So my initial value for the population is 18,500. That's like my y-intercept that's like my value of c so let's write down 18,500 was the initial population so that's going to go where i would put c in y equals mx plus c now in this question we're not using y and x we're using p and t now you may not be sure where to put P and where to put T. Is this P or is this P? We'll look at the question, write a linear model for the what? Population. So write an equation for the population. So it's going to be the population equals our gradient times by T plus C. Now our gradient is going to be the increase as T increases by one. And it said, it's got it here that it would increase by 350 per year. So 350 is my uh, gradient, basically. And that gradient, that's where we put M. So we can write our final answer as P equals 350T. So that shows the 350 increase per year. As T goes up by one, the population will go up by 350 plus the initial population of 18,500. Okay, let's go into part B. And part B says, write down one reason why this may not be a realistic model. Now I'm gonna write down several reasons and then you can just pick one of these. So one reason might be that this, pos uh, this model assumes that the population will always be increasing and never decreasing. Or another reason might be the model assumes the increase will be the same every year. In other words, that it will always be 350 every year. So you should now be able to do exercise 5H on pages 106 to 108, then followed by the mixed exercise.